Can we uh, start with your, your transfer window dealings? It's over and done with. A busy deadline day. Talk to us about your two new keepers, firstly. Yeah, listen, of course, Jordan's a, 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 obviously a player that's been at Forest and uh, we've done our homework on him with Paul Clements and he's uh, got good experience and we've heard he's a fantastic trainer and we just felt that he can come into the building and push the our two young ones who have done ever so well in the moment, you know. And due to the unfor unfortunate situation with Lee, uh, we found ourselves in a situation where we had two young keepers and they need a little bit of support in that respect, you know. And of course, Thomas, everyone knows what Thomas has done in the game. He's going to bring a really big presence to the club and he's really excited about the challenge ahead and we're very happy to have him here. You felt there was a real need for two goalkeepers then, did you, to come in? So you've got a stable of, of five in total, obviously with people out on loan as well. Yeah, of course, we discussed it as a staff, you know. Um, Nick's done ever so well. Um, he's a very young lad, but he plays with a real maturity and he's done excellent um, in the games that he's been involved in. And we all know he's going to have a really big future. Um, we just felt that the group needs that experience in the moment and that know-how and knows of how to go and win games and win games consistently moving forward now. How do you handle that conversation with Nick then? Because I imagine he feels he's probably not done too bad a job in that situation. Ah, listen, Nick's a great kid. He's really happy to be around here and he's got a great work ethic and he trains really hard um, and he's performed well in the games as well. And we know as a young keeper, there's a lot of time and room for development and this is all part of his development moving forward, getting the match uh, experience and obviously being exposed as well in one of the best leagues in Europe, in my opinion. You know, we're one step off the Premier League here and he's done really well and everyone's very pleased with him moving forward now. And Ryan obviously came back from alone to help out in that period when you had the injury and now he's gone back out again. How important was it for him and how much was it his desire to get back out and be playing some games? I think uh, the case with Ryan, I've not really seen much of Ryan. Um, and obviously we discussed it and we just felt that it was important for him at his stage of his development to play games. And uh, he's, going up, he's going down there and I'm sure he'll do really well uh, and everyone's going to support him with that move. Talk to me a bit about John Russell as well. He'd been a bit of a forgotten man and he's he's now gone out of the club going to Barnsley. Just give me your take on John Russell and, and that situation. Listen, first of all, I just wanted to wish John Russell all the best. Um, he's a fantastic boy. He's a Mormon. He's a, he's a great kid. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a a lad who's got a really good personality and he's just been unfortunate that he's not found himself in the team. Uh, and he was given his chance earlier in the period when I first come in. And things just didn't work out. But that happens in football. We have to move forward. We know where we have to be at the end of the season. We're very focused on what we want to do. But what we will say is that we appreciate John's efforts and what he's done for the club in the past. And we wish him all the best, like all the other lads that have went out. How disappointing is that? Because he's clearly got a lot of talent, hasn't he? Yeah, of course. You know, it's the same. Uh, the other guys are in the same boat as well. There's... A lot of talented players here, but ultimately we know how it is in football. Um, it's the business end of the season now. It's a very important phase for the club moving forward. And we've not got room for any more experiments, you know. And uh, we wish these guys all the best. Uh, and as I said, we could only pick 10 outfield players. And uh, they guys are, in my opinion, deserving their chance at the moment. And they've done well. They've been unlucky in games where they haven't won, but they've also shown in games that they're up for the fight. And uh, they've, they've managed to win games as well. And we've got to continue that and move forward as a group. Aaron Rohn, Luke and Bette, they, they both went out as well with Mbete, recalled by Manchester City. Do you feel you got everything that you needed to get done on the deadline day done? Were you happy with the business? Jonathan, we could sit here and discuss. Um, there was a lot of outs. Um, but I, I felt like there was a military of players here. <laughs> My phone kept beeping right up until the back of 12 in the evening. And that's just what we are as a club. We have a lot of players and they're trying to find their way in their careers and it was important to support them and a lot of them wanted to play football, which is normal. Any player who's quite happy to sit, not play games and just pick up their salary is, is, is no player in my opinion, you know. And we're really glad that we managed to find them all good moves and they'll go out and, and further their careers. And as I said, we have a lot more important things to focus on now, which is for this club to start winning games again and to go on a run and uh, bring a, uh, a lot of positivity back to the building. So team news-wise, how are you looking then? Anthony Knockhart, we've seen footage of him out training, which is a big positive. 
yeah, listen, there's so many positives moving on to the weekend game. Um, it was a very hard-working performance against uh, Coventry. It was just unfortunate that we didn't look so dangerous in terms of attacking, uh, but it's definitely something we're working on. Um, we know the numbers in the areas for the players that have been playing there haven't been great the whole season, but it's not for the lack of effort. And this can happen at all different uh, clubs and all different types of level. I mean, I remember even Arsenal three seasons ago when Mikel Arteta first arrived, they were really struggling to score goals with the big players they had, but they kept at it. And that's what we are as a group. We believe in this group. There's so many good players. They work so hard um, and we know that they'll uh, get the, the luck or the fortune and, and the game's coming up. Is Anthony available for selection this weekend or is it still a bit too soon? Listen, he's very much in my thoughts for the weekend. Um, he's a very talented player and he's a guy that will give everybody a lift. What I, what I have been saying to the new additions is that uh, there's a real excitement from them all moving into this game at the weekend because we all know um, this club in our stadium, we've got the best fans in the league and when it's really positive, it's rocking and we have to really get behind these new additions and show them what we're about. Um, there's been two or three games this season, especially for me, the game when we played and we beat Millwall at home. It was an unbelievable atmosphere and I actually took a, a sit back for a moment before the end of the game, which you never really do as a head coach. And I just looked at it and thought, I would love to be involved in a playoff push here um, because this uh, stadium would be on fire. And we've really got to get behind these new additions and there's a po possible chance of six uh, home debuts at the weekend. And uh, there's a really positive feel now going into this game. You talk a lot of positives, Mark, and it's it's clearly one of your characteristics. And, and after games, you do that as well. You won't be surprised to hear that some supporters who contact us after the matches don't necessarily share your positive analysis of the games. Just talk to us a bit about sort of how you explain that difference between maybe the supporters' views and opinions of a performance and your quite positive views and opinions of a performance, such as that commentary one. Listen, I've been through this all before, you know, if you look at my career when I went out to Germany and Ingolstadt, um, we won games and went down the second season. We were unfortunate to not go up due to the playoffs. And in the third season, we went up and there was a real positive feeling. And my mindset is that we never change. We know what we are about. We're very focused on what we're doing and there's real clarity on everything we do as a club. Um, as I said, uh, there's been certain games as well when I have been very aggressive in terms of my post-match analysis and I felt that we've maybe underperformed especially in the cup against Preston because we, we took the lead and we let Preston off the hook you know and of course we need to understand that there was a lot of young players play, playing that day however um, there's certain levels of expectations and we drive each other as a group and we demand out of each other and as I said uh, I'm really positive about what we are doing moving forward as I said, we're very clear on what we're doing. Um, there's a real defensive structure there in the team to build on now, and it's just about improving our attacking side of the game. And we need to score more goals, especially at home, to get this uh, great crowd we've got off their feet. Maybe it's a Yorkshire thing, but can you understand why maybe that positivity doesn't necessarily work on everyone in the fan base? I absolutely uh, understand it and I'll explain why because uh, this club was two minutes from going to the Premier League last season and what's happened is they've now come and found themselves in this situation which I've kept talking about with four points from the first quarter of the season and so selling a hell of a lot of their top players to big clubs and what we're doing is we're rebuilding now and it's important that we stay in the league because rebuilding uh, things takes time and we have to be careful in what we're doing, that we're not pushing these players too much in the respect that they fall down. But we've also got to understand that it's going to be a bumpy road along the way until we find consistency levels. And for me, I've come here to push this club forward. And I know that when we stay in the league this season, we will build moving forward to the future. And I know how quickly these uh, feelings from the fans can change. And I don't take it um, serious, to be honest with you. Uh, I really respect their views and their opinions and as I've said it's an incredible feeling when you're coming in with your young family and they're actually clapping you in the car park and you're sitting three third from bottom it's unbelievable you know and it's a real credit to the people and um, they're fantastic fans and I'm working so hard to bring them the best alongside my staff 
and I'm sure we'll do that at home this weekend. Just before we come on to QPR, obviously we all know the club is up for sale at the moment. I just wondered whether that was creating any uncertainty for you because we know changing ownerships can also result in changing management, can it? Yeah, I've been through these situations before, you know, especially at Hertha, there was always uh, unset. They were unsettled very much in the background all the time and at Ingolstadt as well, where they're owned by Audi, which is one of the most powerful countries and uh, companies in the world. There's always uncertainty there and what I've learned is that I just focus on what I'm doing on the pitch. I focus on what I'm working on with these players day in, day out and with my staff and we're all working hard. And what I will say is that every time we go into these games, no one can question the application from these players. They're working ever so hard, week in, week out. They're putting big demands on themselves. And uh, as I said, I think it is just going to be a bumpy road now to the end of the season and we have to keep calm. Uh, we've not, we're, we're not going to panic in this situation and I think that when we win at the weekend there's going to be a great feeling about the club moving forward now. How pleased are you to be back at home then? You've been away a lot haven't you and then you've obviously had games called off as well it's been a long time. Yeah listen it feels like it's been forever um, and we're really excited to be at home I love playing at home in front of our crowd and especially like the games we've touched on where they really got behind us um, and there's a few that stick out with my mind as well um, and I'm going to enjoy the moment as well. Um, these next five games are going to define our season for me. Five big games in 15 days and the players are under no illusions, you know. We owe it to ourselves to turn these games into positive performances, but not only that, we'll get the wins as well. And we're all experienced enough. We've all been through these situations before and we're very much looking forward to it going in with good confidence. That's quite a big calling, isn't it? Five big games, define the season. The, the pressure's on for everybody to get those results and get yourself out of that bottom three then. Yeah, the pressure's on, you know, and like I said, there's been a lot of hard work uh, on the training ground moving in to put ourselves in this position we are. Uh, we have two games in hand on, on Cardiff and we could come up the bottom three for the first time pretty much the whole season, which is amazing. And the guys all know the situation we're in. And the carrot's there for us and it's only going to be hard work and determination that gets us out of it. And it starts Saturday and we've got to take uh, each game at a time. But we do know that we're going to be playing in the next five games against teams that are all around about us in the table. And uh, as I said, and I keep uh, touching on it, it's the business end of the season now. Thanks, Matt. All the best tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take Thanks. care. Thanks, Johnny. We'll come to Stephen next, please. Add it up. Hey Stephen, do, do you feel the uh, the squad is in better shape now than it was at the start of the transfer window? Then yeah, there's no doubt about that, especially in the forward areas, you know. And I think the guys have worked so hard the whole season, and it's just been unfortunate that they've not got the numbers that they've wanted to achieve in terms of the outcomes. But these guys coming in are just going to give them support, uh, and it's going to bring uh, a lot more experience to the group and also more depth, because we all know we're five games in fifteen days. It's going to be impossible for the same players to play every game, you know. Yes, it might be a, a bit of rotation then over these, these next few games. Yeah, listen, I think it's more about just utilising the squad well. Um, that's why we've been creative in the transfer window and we've got a good mix of players in who could play also players that could play two or three positions and they're very flexible in that respect. Um, and as I said, there's a lot of positives going into this game at the weekend. There could be five or six uh, potential home debuts, which will give our whole stadium a lift. And I know the fans will get behind them because they'll welcome them really well and they'll all be excited to see these new signings as well. Um, we spoke on Saturday about uh, some of the, the difficulty in, in attack. When you look back at that game, where do you think that difficulty came from? I think it's more down to the whole season. You know, there's a real frustration there with everybody down to the, the attacking uh, side of the game for us as a club. But I've heard that it's been kind of the trademark of the clubs for previous years as well. And it's something that we're continually looking to improve. What I would say is that when you score a goal against us, you have to really earn it. Or it's down to individual class or individual brilliance, which the two goals were from two big players from Coventry. But predominantly from the game, it's very hard to break us down. What we've got to do is we've got to turn the screw on teams and we've got to be more aggressive in the forward areas. And it's also about getting the right blend and, and mix and, and the attack. 
do you feel like the new players you've got available will help you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like uh, the guys that are coming into that area of the pitch are coming in with real confidence. And uh, we're really looking forward to showing our fans at home what they're about. I think there were times in the game on Saturday where players ended up a bit isolated. There maybe could have been a bit more of a short game. Uh, players coming to help each other out. Is that something you've looked at in training this week? Uh, no, it's something that we've been working on from the very from the very start. What you'll see as well is that um, we're outpassing teams, which is really positive. And we're all over the team in the bottom three. We're not a, a team who's just trying to kick the ball along. And it's there's no thought to it. We're really shifting the ball well. And we're shifting it in good areas. It's just about when we get in these areas, what are we trying to do? Um, how ruthless are we with our killer instinct in the box when we take our chances? And we need to be more aggressive in the areas. I think there were times, particularly first half, where you did see some of the, the back line trying to knock it long, particularly to Jack Rodoni. Is that something you're trying to coach out of them? Or is that sort of a, a ploy that you, you think you can go to? I think it's just down to being flexible, Steve. You know, uh, you've got to have uh, many armories there. And uh, if we've got players who can stretch the game, then you have to use them, you know. And uh, as I said, it's really pleasing that we're shifting the ball about well. We're breaking pressing lines from the opposition and we're playing on the front foot. We're, we're aggressive, you know, but we just have to take care in the bigger moments of the games, especially in the transitions when it's that final pass or that final getting the shot off. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, we're here to support these guys and we're working on it constantly moving forward. One play you didn't have available at the weekend was not in Wycorn. Is he in contention for tomorrow? Yeah, he's definitely in contention. Um, I'm sure the fans will get behind him as well. He's a very experienced player and he, he's very serious about his game. Um, and I'm sure that he's going to be a good addition to the, the team. What do you think he brings that's different to sort of what we've seen previously with Jordan Rhodes, Danny Ward? Listen, they're all very different. I think what Martin does is he comes and brings a real link-up play. Um, he comes and connects the game and he's very clever in the box, you know, and he's also a good uh, set play taker as well, which is going to be a good addition to the squad. Um, so we're very much looking forward to having him on board now this weekend. Uh, I've had a few people asking me why Etienne Kamara has been out of your matchday squad recently. Um, can you shed any light on that at all? Please? Yeah, listen, it's really just down to the fact that we're captains back. Um, Etienne's very much the player who plays in the defensive midfield role in the six. And Hoggy, Hoggy, you know, it's going to be very hard to leave him out when he's fit. He's the leader of the group, he's the captain, and his performances have been outstanding since he's come back in. And it's like all young players, you know, they have to take their medicine when they find themselves out the team. And Etienne's very much in my thoughts moving forward. And as I've touched on, to play five games in 15 days is going to be relentless, so everybody's going to play their partner. Is it just... Do you feel the two of them maybe play a too similar a role to play inside together? No, not at all. Just at the moment, you know, we're we're playing, uh, as I said, uh, either with, with two in there and one of them's the guy that tries to join in and go forward, but Scott has done really well. Scott has very clean in possession and I think that's a big reason where, where passing stats have went up um, and how we are in, in the possession. Um, and then in terms of Hoggy, Hoggy, he, he, he brings everything to the team, you know. He drives people on, he's the leader, he's the captain, he's aggressive in the duels. And as I said, Etienne's developing and he's going really well and he's just got to be patient. And when he comes in, he's got to take his chance again. Um, I think one position that people looked at going into deadline day and wondering if he might do something was, was left back, left wing back. Was there ever any thought around that? Yeah, of course. Um, there was definitely a position that we identified and that we were looking at. And uh, as I said, I really believe in this uh, squad. Um, I know the squad's capable of winning games and we've shown that. And we've got to give them support and keep working hard. And I'm sure that we'll, we'll win games and get on a run. You've got options, younger options there as well. Ben Jackson had a run earlier in the season. Shaheem Headley back. What do they need to do to get in ahead of Josh Ruffles? They need to just keep working hard. Um, they're shown really well. Um, and as I said, Ben's done an excellent. He's probably similar to Etienne in that respect, that he's done well and he, he's probably found himself, the team at the moment, to a change of uh, maybe system and so on. But what Ben's got is he's very flexible. He could play two or three positions, which is excellent. And uh, I'm really happy that he's working hard and showing everybody that he's determined to get in the team. 
and Headley's the same, comes into the same bracket. He's shown real determination in the training as well, and he's got probably different attributes to any of them, you know, because he's a very attacking-minded player and he, he's got great uh, athleticism. But we have to understand that he's a young player, you know, and he's, he's developing. Was it um, not being able to get someone for that position, was that partly down to uh, the need for a goalkeeper, which obviously coming into the window you wouldn't have been expecting? We know that was the only fee that you spent transfer fee was on. No, n not at all, you know, we were very clear on what we wanted to do, we know that there's not a lot of money here, so we had to be creative, and you could see there's been a lot of outs as well, and that's why we've been able to do the ins, and it's been all down to the recruitment guys, and Lee Bromby, and obviously Dave Baldwin, with his experience in the Premier League as well, and the network that they all have, and we all see that the players that have come in are going to bring a big help to the club, and uh, they're going to support these players who have been in there working hard to put Marcel in the position we are, and that's to win at the weekend and hopefully go out the, the bottom uh, three with uh, two games in hand in Cardiff. It's important to get that win on your own turf, isn't it? Not, not just for, obviously, a league position, but for, for the mood with the fans as well. Listen, it's always important to win in front of your home fans. Uh, we put big demands on ourselves in that respect because well, that's why we play this game, you know, to make them happy. They're the people who come and support us through thick and thin. And we know there's that disappointment from last season, the club's in transition, there's many doubts and questions everywhere. But what we are doing is we're very consistent in what we're doing. We're showing real focus going into the games and the lads are working so hard and you could see that clearly in the performances. And it's just about turning that hard work into wins. And we've done it and we've got to continue to strive to get the wins moving forward now. Uh, yeah. Are there any other new injury issues for, for this weekend at all? No, not really, to be honest with you. Danny Ward's uh, been out on the training pitch as well, doing individual work, and he's looking like he's not too far off, which is great. Um, and as I said, the squad's looking really strong. Uh, there's a lot of depth to it now. We also have to understand that there's been a lot of other players that have been out for lengthy injuries, so they're coming back and they need to get their cell up to speed. But uh, it's that period of the season where, where they are slowly but surely starting to pick up to speed. Cool. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Phil, the Octopus, you got anything to add? Yeah, hi, Mark. How are you doing? Um, so, just, 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 just the one question. I know we've covered a lot already, obviously, with the, the, the transfer window and, <clears throat> excuse me, and the, uh, and, the, and the game at the weekend. I just wanted just you came in, obviously, it was a difficult situation. It remains that. Um, what would it mean to you personally if you were to, to, to achieve keeping this club uh, in the Championship? Listen, I think if we keep this club in the Championship, then it's a very, very, very big achievement because it's the whole disappointment of last season, of handling the disappointment of not going up. Then uh, there's been two changes of uh, management and also the fact that there's been a hell of a lot of players sold on um, and you're trying to build a, a new squad without a big pre-season. Uh, and obviously, I'm now the, another new coach who's come in, and uh, we're the same situation. We're trying to find consistency. But what I will say is that there's been so many positives throughout because there's been a lot of players who have stepped up from lower leagues who are really taking their chance and showing what they can do in this great league that we're involved in. And there's also been a lot of young players that have improved as well. Uh, and uh, as I said, we know what we need to do to stay in the league and we're going to continually to strive to do that. OK, that's all for me, sorry. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Uh, just finally, Corey, anything to add or is that OK? Everything's fine. Superb. Right, thank Great, you guys. guys. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow, yeah. thanks. Awesome.